Hi guys, Rob here at 3D Printscape. So over the last couple weeks, I've been working with Matthew over at Design Prototype Test on a Budget Ender 3 setup. Uh, basically, it's trying to create the best Ender 3 uh, for the cheapest possible price. Uh, every modification is pretty much printed or using household parts. There are some things you have to buy, uh, but the total cost is significantly cheaper uh, than trying to buy aftermarket parts like the BL Touch as an example. Uh, one of the bigger things is he's using an Allen key or an Allen wrench uh, for the actual probe instead of a BL Touch. My part of that project was uh, building the firmware for that. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time kind of going through uh, the changes that I made in the firmware and how I actually made that work. It could be interesting for any of you guys who are interested in uh, doing any type of DIY setup, kind of diving into Marlin a little bit more. Uh, I know I've done videos on setting up the BL Touch and stuff like that, uh, but going with the Allen wrench, uh, there's a lot more to it. Uh, so I figured I'd just go ahead and do a video covering it. If you have any questions about the process or would like to see any other videos, Videos, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. And if you haven't already, uh, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. All right, let's go ahead and jump over to the computer. All right, guys, so the goal of this project was to really create the best printer for under $200. And he ended up going with an Ender 3. Um, so I went with that firmware. It has the Creality 4.2.2 board. Uh, so it's still a 32 bit board. Uh, so we were good there. So with that, there were three main objectives of the firmware here. Uh, the first one was using the Allen wrench as a probe uh, while still maintaining the Z stop switch for homing and then adding the filament sensor. So I'm going to go through some of the changes I made uh, to make that possible and also a couple of the other miscellaneous changes I made just to make the firmware a little bit better. All right, guys, so I have VS Code open here uh, with the configuration files. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out first before I started digging into the firmware was that um, you should never really trust comments inside of uh, really anything. <laughs> I mean, they can be incorrect. For example, here, this PB0 and PB1 uh, comments are wrong. Um, it's actually the PB0 is in and uh, PB1 is out. I found this actually going through the board schematics uh, when things weren't working as expected. Uh, so just a little side note when actually working on projects like this, just don't trust the comments. Um, I mean, they're a good starting point, but if you're starting to see little random issues or things aren't working the way you would expect, um, they're not always going to be right. Uh, so just food for thought there. Just keep that in mind. All right, going back over to the configuration.h file, let's go ahead and start. I'm going to just run down and kind of talk about all the changes I made. So I'm going to jump to the first one. We had to set the Z min probe and stop inverting to true. With the way that the sensor works, um, it had to be true because uh, it's actually inverting it. Uh, so where's that at? I'll just go ahead and search for it real quick. So it's going to be right here. Uh, it's basically inverting the logic of the probe. So BL Touch, after the change they made back in summer uh, last year, uh, this should be false for BL Touch. Um, there was some debate on whether it should be true or false. It worked both ways, um, but they added some additional logic to the sanity check to force it to be false. Um, but for this project specifically, it had to be true because of the way that the logic worked. All right, so now I'm going to jump down to the Z probe options section. I'm just going to search for that and then talk about the changes here. Uh, the first one is we want it to make sure that we're still using the Z stop switch for the homing. Uh, so to do that, we wanted to comment this out. By default, this is uncommented. If you are installing a BL touch uh, and you have all five pins connected to the BL touch port, you would comment this out, uncomment this, and then uncomment Z safe homing. Uh, but in this case, because we weren't using the probe itself for homing, all of those needed to remain commented out. Then scrolling down a little bit further here, we had to define what type of probe we're using. Um, this is an Allen wrench that's a fixed mount wrench on the side. Uh, so I went with the fixed mounted probe here. And then continuing down, we'll look at our offsets. Uh, these were the offsets that were provided. So we got X, Y, and Z. And then from here, you'll uh, have to fine tune the Z offset as well. But that was a good starting point for what it is. And then I also adjusted the probe margin so that it comes in a little bit. So it's not just at the edge of the bed. I took that from 10 to 25. And because the Allen wrench is pretty long, we had to adjust some of the heights for when it's actually moving between the probing points. So scrolling down to uh, the Z clearance, I ended up changing 
All of these to 10 so there was enough clearance in general for the probe to move around without scraping the bed. Then I also adjusted the Z probe low point to give a little bit of a buffer. It took it from negative two to negative five because we were having some random issues with it um, triggering when it wasn't supposed to. Right, and then going down further here, I enabled the Zeman probe repeatability test. I'm going to do a separate video on this coming up here pretty soon. Um, I would like to actually have this test ran on this printer. I'm curious to see how the Allen wrench actually works as a probe, whether it's getting around the same uh, repeatability results or reliability results as the BL touch or CR touch, or if it's uh, going to be different. I mean, we're talking significant difference from a cost point. Uh, I think you made a point that the Allen wrench that was used to create this probe is actually included with the printer. So you're just printing the one little part. So you're really talking, what, 25, maybe 50 cents for this probe uh, versus a off-brand BL Touch is about $20, $25. Or if you're getting into the branded BL Touch or CR Touch, you're about uh, $35, $45, somewhere around there. Uh, so it's definitely significantly cheaper, which was the purpose of this. And then we also made some adjustments to the X and Y minimum position to account for uh, some of the offsets uh, on the actual printer itself. Um, I ended up going with uh, 2.5 on the X minimum position and then negative 5.5 on Y and then adjusted the max positions accordingly to make sure that we had the 235 millimeters for the bed size there. I guess this wasn't really a hard requirement, uh, but if you're trying to get it to actually be a true center when it's homing, uh, that was needed. The next scrolling down further, uh, I went ahead and disabled the men software end stop. Uh, which is going to be right here that will allow you to go negative on the uh, z offset without commenting this out you would have to disable it uh, with g code uh, before you try to set your z offset so you'd have to use the i think it's the uh, m211 as zero command to disable it it's just i found it easier to just disable it in the firmware though it is somewhat risky uh, because if you don't know what you're doing it's not going to have that extra uh, safety margin where it will let you go negative and that really covered everything that was needed for the probe in this file. Uh, there was one other change I made to the configuration underscore advance around the probe, uh, but we'll talk about that when I get over there. Um, the next set of changes were around the filament runout sensor. Uh, so we'll go ahead and search for that, which is right here. I just went ahead and uncommented this. We're using mostly default settings here. And to do that, we just uncommented the filament runout sensor from here. We're using default settings across the board. Um, at least for the sensor itself, it works just fine. Um, we had to change some of the settings when it came to uh, the park feature to make sure that, that it was actually enabled because by default it isn't. Uh, so let's go ahead and move down to that. And I lied. There was one more change related to the uh, probe, uh, just setting it to a bed leveling by linear so it creates that mesh. And then the last change we made to the configuration.h file was uncommenting the nozzle park feature so that it actually moved away from the print when it paused. So let's go ahead and find that really quick. I'll show you what that looks like. I'm just going to search for park. And then we just uncommon it here. And then I use the default settings for the position of where it actually moves the nozzle to. Ended up working out pretty well. All right, so that was it for the configuration.h. Let's jump over to the configuration advanced file. Uh, there were only a handful of changes here. Uh, first one being the probe offset wizard, which I'll just search for. I went ahead and enabled this. I have a video covering um, the offset wizard, uh, which I'll link to below. Uh, but overall, it really just makes setting the Z offset much easier. And then the next change I made was to show the percent complete on the actual printer. So if we search for show underscore SD, went ahead and uncommented this. I actually have a video covering this one as well. Uh, I can link to that one, um, but basically, I just went with the basic here. I just added the percent complete to it. Uh, where in that video, I also talk about some of the ways to rotate between the different settings and stuff like that. Uh, but just enabling it here was uh, what we were looking for. And then we had to enable the advanced park feature uh, in order for the filament runout sensor to work. So I'll search for that. Uh, by default, this was common out. So I uncommented this. I used default settings through here. Uh, with the exception of I uncommented park head on pause so that it also uses the park that I talked about in the configuration file uh, when it pauses for the filament uh, sensor as well instead of just the M600 command. All right, so that covered all of the firmware changes that need to be made. 
I also changed the image and stuff in the bootscreen.h file, um, but I don't think it's too important to go into that. But if you're looking to do uh, DIY projects or using different types of probes and stuff like that versus just the BL Touch, um, this video I think would really help you out. Uh, that's why I ended up making it. I got videos covering BL Touch, CR Touch, and the installs for all of that, but I didn't really have one covering just doing a fixed probe, uh, so that's what I kind of covered here. If you have any questions about the process, you can go and leave a comment below. Hopefully the video wasn't too dry or boring. I know it can be um, boring kind of just watching configuration changes be made or kind of going over those. But, but for the people who are looking to use a fixed probe, I think it'll be valuable for them. All right, guys, so that covered all the changes I made inside of Marlin. Uh, hopefully you found that helpful. I learned quite a bit kind of going through this process, especially around not trusting some of the comments in the uh, configs, uh, just because you don't know who put them there. Um, like I said, that one pin was swapped, uh, so I made some assumptions on the initial build, which made uh, the actual firmware build uh, more challenging because we had to figure out what was actually going on. Uh, but overall, like I said, I enjoyed this project, and I'll link to the design prototype test video below, and if you haven't already, make sure you check that out. If you have any questions about the process or would like to see any other videos, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks.